scissor, knives. Parafilm wire secateurs the knives are sharp enough. That's a good sign. Okay, labels. Made of treated wood. More wire. and alcohol. Hmm. Okay, hello folks. I'm sitting here and scratching in my um, my what shall I call it? Pandora's box or something. <laughs> this is my uh, toolbox for um, my grafting stuff. I had to make this uh, toolbox here because uh, you know all this grafting stuff was accumulating you know all over the place here as uh, the years passed by so um, now I got nearly everything in here and uh, it looks like everything is on its place but there's one thing I haven't shown yet that's why you know the one secret room in here. So come on over here, I'll show you. And inside this room here, you know, on the red carpet, is my grafting knife. This is razor sharp. And this here is my baby when it comes to grafting. There are so many different ways of grafting and um, to do some of them you need uh, grafting wax. Um, you can buy this grafting wax on a nursery or another you know, kind of store that sells these things. But you can also make it yourself. And uh, the really old time grafters, they did so. I will show two old-fashioned and uh, well-known recipes for those two kind of grafting wax that uh, I wanted to show you. The cold floating one and the warm floating one. Uh, the recipes I use uh, are old and well-known and uh, you know the old-fashioned grafters that went around from farm to farm and grafted in uh, older days they made their own stuff like this and uh, they work very well and uh, the best of all they are organic stuff. So first of all I want to show you what kind of things I use here when I make them. The first thing I want to mention is alcohol. Uh, cleanliness is next to godliness my mom always used to say and you got the same uh, with grafting as well. Because uh, I use alcohol to clean uh, the scissors, the knives, and you know the tools I use. But I also use it in the cold floating wax. I'll show you that later how, how uh, I use it. The second thing I use is beeswax. Looks like this. And the third thing. It's pine tar. I usually make that myself, but uh, for this occasion, I bought some. And this here is tallow. This one I uh, washed out uh, myself. You buy tallow at the butcher 
and then you clean it uh, in you know many rounds with uh, boiling water and in the end you get a clean towel like this I can show that once how I make it um, turpentine organic turpentine I also use to clean tools but I also use it in the warm floating wax and some tin cans to uh, cook the whole stuff in. Some of these things here like the alcohol and turpentine are very flammable so you gotta be very careful when you use it and uh, avoid using it nearby the warm stove so uh, I, I can't say that enough times it's very important. So I will show you how I uh, do the warm floating one first so I'll um, switch over to the stove. I will use a water bath when uh, processing and making this wax. I start with um, one part beeswax and I use a half a part of tallow. And then after that I pour a little bit warm water in here and I put on some heat here. kind of lid over here then it will melt a little bit faster. So I'll be back when uh, the tallow and the uh, wax has melted. Okay here we are again and now the um, tallow and uh, wax has melted. And now I'm going to use two parts of uh, pine tar. I preheated this to about uh, say 40 50 degrees Celsius so it can uh, run easier. Pine tar has quite this sharp smell to it so uh, if you want to you can put the fan on but um, I tried this but it uh, made so so much noise okay so now I mix these three th things together and try to warm it up a little bit and so I can be sure that all the stuff is mixed. Okay, here we are again. I have now taken the tin cup out from the water bath and let it cool slightly, not so much. Now I'm going to mix in the turpentine. The turpentine is preheated to about say 30-40 degrees Celsius and I use a half pot with turpentine and you can use a little bit more if you want to but I I think I prefer a half pot with this Now you mix this well together. For a while. You know tar is very antiseptic. And in older days they used to make an ointment of uh, tar and tallow. And put on uh, wounds and 
you know, cuts and things like that. So um, the wounds healed very good after using it. So it's good for people and plants. I think it's well mixed here now. Uh, this warm uh, floating uh, grafting wax you need to heat up a little bit a little bit before use and uh, when it cools down it gives uh, a good ceiling. I'll show you what it looks like. So you can uh, you know butter this on with an eye for a paintbrush or something like that. And here I put a little stick in. I don't know if you can see it here. When it cools down you get um, a quite hard surface. So this seal here is waterproof and antiseptic. Okay? So this was the warm floating wax and now I'll show how I make the cold floating wax. The cold floating wax is uh, also very useful because you don't have to heat it up and you can uh, rub it on the, um, on the graft as it is. But you can also use it uh, for sealing you know, wounds on your plants and trees. So um, it's very useful to have a little bit of it uh, in store someplace if you uh, have some bad luck and uh, get some damage on your trees. And for the coal floating wax you use three parts of pine tar and a half part with tallow and mix it together while heating up uh, the stuff. I'll be back when it's all ready. Okay, so now I've taken this out from the hot water and I let it cool down to about say 30-40 degrees Celsius and um, I let it cool down so the alcohol I'm gonna put in here don't evaporate or catch fire. <laughs> so what I will do now is to add three quarters of a part with 96% uh, alcohol. And mix this well together. And when this cools down it will be like a paste. So alcohol it smells a little bit nicer than the turpentine. And this is not so bad. Okay, let's test it now. Yeah, gives a quite nice and polished surface. And both uh, the warm floating grafting wax and this cold floating one, both of them will turn hard after a while out in the frame when the turpentine and alcohol has uh, evaporated. So, as I said, you can use this on uh, tree wounds and even uh, wounds on your limbs. Okay, looks quite good now. I'm gonna try to pour it into this jar here. Without messing too much. Like 
on this spoon here. Throw it away before your wife sees it. <laughs> okay, here they are, finished both of them. Okay, folks, I hope this was a little bit useful for uh, somebody out there. But it was very fun to make this video as well. In, in future videos, I will also show how I extract pine tar, you know, for um, small amounts for use like this. And also the cleaning of the tallow I use. But that's another story. So, until next time, I'll see you folks. Have a great time. Bye.